episode 164 of the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we pick a story and we talk about it. This could be a movie, TV series, anime, manga, comic book, audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, and then we come back here and we talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined as always by Kyle Springer. Good morning. Happy 4th of July. It is. Yeah. It's hot dog day. Hot dog day, indeed. The day that we all uh, bow down to our Lord and Savior hot dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it's uh, we're recording this on 4th of July. Uh, so it is a holiday here. I have tomorrow off of work, yeah. which I'm really excited about. Uh, so I'm, I'm feeling good. Feeling good, indeed. What about you? How's your weekend been? It's been nice today. I get to I've just had like family and friend events, which is good. It's I'm filled with hug energy. I've gotten to hug a lot of people. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and like be outside. It's nice. That's yeah. Fun. Oh, I, I also have tomorrow over and then my some of my family's going to come over. My sister-in-law and my niece have never seen my place, so we're going to just nice. hang out and like watch cartoons and bake cookies. Do that things sounds- four-year-olds like. That sounds, I mean, well, that's also what I do, so. <laughs> right. Maybe that's what Except I would do anyway. But Cookies, I'll, I'll probably just buy the store-bought ones, but it's like I have cartoons and cookies, and that's, that's me. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Speaking stuff, of cookies, today's topic is the, we watched the Japanese live-action uh, Netflix original show called Kantaro, the Sweet Tooth Salary Man, which is we sure about... Did. We sure We absolutely watched it. We, and we won't soon forget it. This is an absolute trip of a show about this guy who is obsessed with desserts. He runs a secret desserts blog that's very popular, but he publishes it under the pseudonym Sweets Night, so nobody knows who he is. And he takes this job at a publishing company where he goes out on sales visits to bookstores and then he sneaks away to like eat a dessert while he's on the clock. And he's like, I have to be super good at my job so that nobody cares. Nobody suspects that I'm wasting time going out here eating a a shaved ice. Yeah, (laughs) he won't tell anyone his secret. He is the only one who knows he is Sweets Night. Yeah. This, uh, so uh, w- how did you find this? That's what I, w- I don't know, because I, <laughs> I had never heard of this. I had never seen this. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I don't watch a lot of foreign mm. stuff, but th- I, there, there is enough of like, I want to see what Korean shows are yeah. out there or what Japanese shows like are you, out there. Or you watch more foreign stuff than the average person I talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had never heard of this. So how did you stumble across this? I think I was at a party in like late 2019. It might have been like a friend's giving party and somebody just mentioned it. I wish I could tell you where and who told me about it. Okay. I don't know anymore. Word of mouth. <laughs> but like I put it in my back pocket and uh, I was going to do a set of live action Japanese pitches last year to celebrate when would have been the Tokyo Olympics, which I went ahead and did anyway, you know, in, mm-hmm. in its honor, in optimism for it. And we're coming up on that in a couple of weeks. So I thought, let's bring this one back. I really wanted, I really hoped yeah. you would have picked this one last year. We watched Midnight Diner instead, which we both really liked. And yep. I've, I've just been waiting for the next time I can try and get Kantaro in here. <laughs> yeah well i i i had to pick this one this time it's it sounded ridiculous it sa- sounded I, like i i didn't really know what to expect but it has the mm. uh like japanese shows sometimes have these names that at, at least to us here in america are a bit strange of like why yeah. is this title so long and desc- descriptive of of this and yeah. it's just like I like I I feel I feel like if this was an American sh- show, there'd be like a one word title <laughs> that is yeah. like that is like encompassing of the whole thing, or it might be called like Sweets Night or or, or something. Yeah, business is like sweet. That. Yeah, uh, but it, yeah, it has the Kentaro, the sweet tooth salary man, and it's just it seems 
joyous is is I, yeah. I think a good way, way to to say that um and so I, I I had to pick this, but I had no expectations going in. I I, I didn't know what this was going to, to be. And holy cow, Melissa, this was amazing. This, <laughs> this show was, a was lot great. Of fun. This yes! was so much fun. I I I didn't know what to ex- expect. It it's it's altogether cheesy and campy, and at the same time, really well made. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's funny, it's dramatic, it's well acted, but it's also like a lower b- 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 budget production. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it is cheesy and over the t- top and overly j- 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 overly dramatic. And it's just this like perfect mix of, I don't know what it is, what this is that I'm watching, but I'm having so much fun. Yeah, so, I've never seen a show quite like this before. Like what I said earlier sounds like a sitcom premise. He wants to go out and have all of these sweets and escape from his job. And he's got one coworker who suspects that it's him, but like he won't. He just acts like he has no idea what she's talking about. No, I've never seen that blog. I don't know what it is. I don't. I'm just going out yeah. to visit bookstores. No, I'm not going to eat a parfait. It. It sounds like it's mostly going to be that and then just like the struggle of him, like trying to escape to these places, trying to hide it. No, the the sitcom portion of it is like half of it or less. The show is mostly he goes to a a cafe based on a real cafe in Japan, eats a dessert based on a real real dessert that that place serves. Yeah. And he when he eats them, he has this like orgasmic transcendent like religious experience where he goes out of body to like this little fantasy world like if he's eating a peach dessert he imagines like it's him walking around but he's got a peach for a head like the old gushers commercials and he meets like a peach princess and they like dance together like this is what happens when he eats the dessert and the show is it spends like 10 out of these like 23 minute episodes it spends at least 10 solid minutes on he describes the cafe and how the proprietor came to found this cafe and what the cafe is like and the history of this dessert and how it's served and how this cafe does it special and how they prepare the mm-hmm. ingredients and what the flavor pro- profiles are. It's a culinary show with just like yeah. a couple sitcom hijinks tacked on to it. Yeah, it's it's like one part <laughs> The Office, one part diners, drive-ins and dives. <laughs> like i i that's su- it's such a strange combination because yeah the, those like culinary sh- shows that mm. you would see uh, are informational and they're yeah. fun and they might have some g- gimmick like uh, like the like like the well, either it be the name or it's like here's the celebrity host that is h- hosting this this thing right and they go from burger joint to burger joint uh mm-hmm and or or like I, I think it was it's man versus food right that does all of the like food challenges like hey if you can eat yeah. fifty chicken wings in two minutes you get a prize and you get your name on the wall um mm. it, like a lot of those shows have that but yeah they will have this informational as- as- aspect where it's like here's the history behind the 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 food or the the location or stuff like that and yeah the show absolutely focuses on that but then wraps it in this like fictional sitcom mm. r- r- rapper uh and it's it's entertaining as hell I, it it, it yeah. was a blast i it, uh, it it's very sincere in what they do but they're also yes. so bizarre and ridiculous in what they do that half of the time like you you just you're just like what the hell am i watching this is like <laughs> this dude is like tr- tripping balls on on all yes. this stuff it's 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 a wild wild ride but i think th- this might make it to one of my favorite things at the end of the year um maybe yeah. biggest surprise prize or something because and this, I, this was amazing <laughs> i gotta give uh we have a name to like a performer of the year in past years but i've thought about it like i've quietly sure. decided in my head who my performer of the year is 
Uh, and it's this year. It absolutely has to go to Matsuya Onoe in uh, in the title role. Everything mm-hmm. this guy does with his face is incredible. Every little like twitch of his eyebrow or like flick of his eye or like little grin. Everything he does to manipulate his face is just a joy to watch. Please look up the trailer yeah. for this show on YouTube. Just watch yeah. his face. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if this is true, but when I was searching for the trailer uh, to kind of share in our Discord mm. and stuff, um, I, I couldn't find one with English subtitles. Uh, it's not mm. on YouTube. Uh, there is there is one with subtitles on Netflix. Uh, so we watch yeah. this all on Netflix and stuff. But that must as I was I looking it. for it, I don't know how true this is or if they were referring to this main character. I think they were. Uh, but I, I from what I heard, th- he's so expressive with his face because he he was in like stage a- acting. Or stuff like that. Like they recognized him from like from like a kabuki uh, thing. Like oh, oh, that's what he does, uh, and that, that's why he's so like exp- expressive with his. Yeah, face. that um, would give you that background for these like real big expressions that he has. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we we kind of mentioned what the synopsis yeah. was <laughs> on this thing. He's a salary man. He has a sweet tooth. His name is Kentaro. Kentaro, the sweet tooth That's salary it. man. Um, it really tells you everything they were going to get out of the show, but then you watch it and it's still like not what you're expecting. Yeah. And we, we, we see some of his co-workers and stuff and we hear what they think of him. Sometimes we mm. get a little, little bit of backstory and, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, yeah. And it's, 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 it's a fascinating show. I highly, mm. highly recommend it. Go check it out. This was a good one indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, with that, though, we will take a short break uh, so we can do some housekeeping and then we will get into spoilers and dive deeper into the show. So we will be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots, and we'd love it if you would check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A uh, big shout out to our Patreon supporters at the $5 tier. So thank you, Sam, so much. Uh, we Thanks, love Sam. You and appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot that you support mm-hmm. us here. Um, cool things that we've been doing here at the Whatnots that we want to shout out. We've had some good uh, cross play ah. episodes recently. There's been a lot of rumors going on in the video game I- I- industry. Ooh. Uh, of uh, hey, this thing might be happening. This might be announced. This might. Who knows? You, you, you never know. So, uh, it's kind of fun to talk about those rumors every now and then and speculate uh so be on the lookout for that stuff uh we are about to well let's let's say i was gonna say what we're we're gonna do next week i'll save that till the end of the show but uh Recently on the Captain's Log, we also did our trivia night. Don't don't forget yeah. about that one. That was like two weeks ago, but it's still a good one. Go 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 check it out. That was a lot of so fun. much fun. Indeed, Melissa. Uh huh. Let's get in to spoilers. Here we are. 
Kentaro. <laughs> Kentaro, the sweet tooth salary man. Mm-hmm. This, yeah, I I don't have enough good things to say about this. <laughs> I I didn't know what to expect when it first start. So when when the show first started, and I I saw like it was before you really knew what they were gonna do with the show. I I I I don't know. The first like five minutes of the show didn't hook me at all. It, it was just like this is weird. Like there's a weird tone to it. I don't understand exactly what they're doing. And even that first, like the whole first one is. It's weird, but it's not as weird as the rest of them. It it felt more subdued to me. I, I don't know if you felt that with the, the first one. I my experience was different. I don't know how this happened, but when I started the show, Netflix started me on episode two. And then I realized, I don't think, and then at the, like, at the end of the corner, it says, up next, episode three or whatever it was. I'm like, what do you mean three? I think maybe, like, when I watched the trailer for this show last year, I, like, played the first couple seconds of the first episode, and Netflix thought, oh, you already watched it. So when you click play maybe, now, yeah. I'm going to start you on two. So, yeah, I, I think it maybe it was helpful to start, like, in media res and then go back, even though there's Interesting. so little setup to the show basically it just told you everything that it is we have a little bit of background in that he used to work for um like a coding company used to just be inside working on a computer all day and he would only go out to like these dessert cafes on the weekends and he's like there's so many desserts to eat i need a job that will let me do this every day of the week so that's when he transitions to being in sales for this publishing company just so that he will have the opportunity to go out and have all these desserts while he's on sales calls. Uh, he has he does not care about his job. He's good Which, at it because he knows he has to be good at it. Like yeah. to go through all of these sales calls very quickly, very efficiently. Then he'll have time to go out to this cafe and his boss won't notice he's been gone too long. He's good at his job. He encourages others to be good at the job, but he like has no passion for publishing. He doesn't really care about it, which yeah. is a fun angle. This it's, really is just a salary for him. It's interesting, though, because like, yeah, his his like the the setup for the show is exactly that. He explains what he did. He didn't have time for these sweets. There's so much yeah. of them that he needs something that can like help him get them all. And he, mm. So he's like, so I had an idea. I went to work for a publishing company. And it's just like, right. wait, what? <laughs> what? Why a publishing company? What are you doing? Like, go work for like a website or something that reviews food or some like or like be a writer, like take out a loan somehow and write a book on all, all of the yeah. stuff, which gives you the excuse to like go there all day like be there and like I, I don't know but he's just like i'm gonna work in an office and that's <laughs> yeah. his solution that's his like grand illuminating idea mm. it's just like what are you thinking this is wild it's a terrible idea <laughs> right like it's, it's but it, it's but it works it works for, for, for him yeah it works yeah. for, for, for oh. him there um, so let's talk. I, I want to talk a little bit about the sitcom as- aspect of, mm. of, of this uh, first, because that's what the whole show is wrapped in, like I ex- yeah. ex- explained. Um, yeah, this is the, um, the, the <laughs> this is the outer like pastry. And then like the culinary part is like the sweet red bean filling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so what did you think of the office and the characters in in that that were around him? Because this is really the introduction to all of the side characters then. Mm-hmm. I, I liked it. I liked the office parts of it. I love a, a story set in a Japanese office. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got burned out on Japanese high schools and now I'm really trying to find all adult office based entertainment i can find yeah. Yeah. i like his co-workers i love his boss because at first he's like this real gruff kind of loud bossy guy and you're like yes a classic boss 
but the more time you spend with him, like he's such a goofball. He's so childish. Yeah. He becomes the character who you would not expect at all to be the boss. Like he's just like another salesman. But no, he's in charge of everybody, barking orders at them. But then also there's the episode where it's just him and Dobashi to go out on a sales call. And you see that the boss is not good at sales. Yeah, <laughs> not that he's like a hypocrite. That he's like, and... yeah, like he's not lazy at the job. Like you can tell that he works hard. Like he did something to earn his position. But they go to this one bookstore for a sales call and he's trying to talk to the store clerk and he's like, Wow, that's a magnificent apron you have. And the clerk's like, no, it's just a normal one. And he's like, yeah. what color is that? Green? And he's like, yes, it's green. And he's like, here's a bunch of flyers or new books are trying to sell. <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, he is he is maybe one of the most uh, yes. over the top characters just with how loud he is. Mm -hmm. Um, and got those like side yes. burns that he has too. Um, wild, wild stuff. Yeah, he's he's the one that I felt was uh, maybe overacting the most, but I came to really like it. At, at first, I was just like, mm. I don't really like that guy. I thought he doesn't really fit with the rest of the show, which seemed to be more subdued, at least in that mm. set setting. And then here he is, the like, rah, 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 you know, just yeah. yelling yes. things and uh, just, yeah. And, but then, yeah, by the end of the show, I was like, I like him. He's, he, he's a good right. guy. He's endearing. I like when he's um the, when it's like the late night episode and he gets Kentaro mm -hmm. to come out on him on this like, you know, drunken Japanese businessman dinner and they're going to go to somewhere else. And he's like, Kentaro, Kentaro, come with me. <laughs> like he likes Kentaro. He wants his friend with him. And he's like, oh, you don't have to yeah. work. You don't have to work that hard. Come on. Let's just go have a beer. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's a lot of fun. But then, so, we, yeah, we, we see his boss. We meet his boss. There's two co-workers who I wish we got more of uh, that yeah. seem to be kind of the, I, I, I don't want to say comedic relief because they didn't really, they, 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 they weren't the comedic relief, but they could have been like it, it mm. seems like it, it they were yeah. maybe intended to be that but then they didn't really do much with them um but they're like these every man kind of characters just two more of the people that work there they're yeah. not the best salesmen they're i i think they're more like online focused um yeah and they just seem like normal people they this is their job they enjoy it but it's you know it might not be their favorite thing um, mm. but they do their job and that's it uh yeah i, I think the I, office I really is well balanced them, but yeah i think the office is well balanced like a a dish is because you've got yeah, our, our main course our primary ingredient that's kantaro you've got the real strong flavor of the boss and then you've got this real sharp interesting puzzling element in dobashi and then sano and yamaji are just like Nice, just stable, neutral, just like that's the, the shortbread stuffing. cookie that everything's yeah. added on to. Yeah, like I like that there were like all the people in the office were nice. They were charming, but not everyone was this huge character. Like some of them just got to be a little bit more of the straight men in these scenarios, which was yeah. good. I'm glad that the entire show was not turned up to 10. Yeah. Uh, and then, then you get some like extra flavor sprinkles of like here's this yeah. other salary man, man, yeah. man that works there. Those guys uh, were great. Salesman. I love, I love the episode where he's got the like young rookie following him around, and this guy was like a high school baseball hero, wanted yeah. to play you know professional baseball, couldn't get into it, had to just take a job to make money, and he's like really aggressive, not in an angry way, just like he's so intense he, like he is like this top athlete going in to like hit the final home run to like win the game or whatever he approaches everything with this incredible intensity and energy and yep. when it's the boss first says okay you're gonna go out with Kantaro for the day Kantaro's gonna tell you what to do the guy turns around 
and bows at Kentaro so ferociously that he like bumps into him. Yeah, he hits it's his the, head river right little, on his shoulder. <laughs> the physical comedy in the show when it does it is really well done. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um Yeah, so then yeah, we 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 mentioned those two. We mentioned Dobashi, that's her name, right? Uh yeah. she is probably the other most important character uh yeah. in, in this. And I really liked her liked her cuz she, mm-hmm. she was the one she wasn't loud and b- 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 boisterous like the boss was, but she is also very obviously the one that is like, okay, this character is going to be turned up to 11, but it is the kind of character that is the, like, strong, silent, calculating antagonist. Um, Yeah, she reminded me a lot of, from what little I've seen of this show, she reminded me of Aubrey Plaza in Parks and Rec. She's got that kind of stoicness to her. Yeah, she, I mean, she's just, she's like in anime villain is what it is, um, is, is, is what her character is. But, uh, so she is the, the, the one that is, that suspects that Kantaro is Sweet Night. Uh, she mm. is a fan of the blog, uh, and she kind of notices this pattern that, hey, these foods that keep popping up on the blog mm. are in the same locations that uh, Kantaro is going on all his sales of visits. So it's probably him. And so she mm-hmm. keeps trying to be like, well, if he goes and gets this one thing, then I know it's him. Or if he like, mm-hmm. what, like she she challenges it him in multiple ways um and i i liked her character a lot but then they put a twist on her character that i really enjoyed uh Mm -hmm. i I thought was wonderful so yeah she she seems to be this like vindictive and antagonist like i'm gonna get you i'm gonna expose you and the world is gonna know like (laughs) this is yeah down down with kentaro this sweet down with sweets night um, mm-hmm. and that's what it seems like at first. And then the, the first hint of the twist is this scene where she is trying to share these sweets with him to kind of trick him, uh, into e- 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 eating something, uh, like right there and then having some kind of reaction that it's like, aha, I knew yeah. it, were this. But she has this f- fantasy in her head where she, he <sighs> the thing, he has the re- 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 reaction and she calls him out and then he gets mad and upset and then it, it gets into like this very suggestive like she yeah. he has her d- d- down onto the table and he's on top of her and she's like punish me dude like i was just like what <laughs> is going on this is wild fascinating yeah i i and he gives off none of those vibes he's Not so completely like stoic and focused on business and no chit chat and like no socialization like he's polite to others but he you know this is not a guy you make conversation with in the office he has no personal interest in you they like that her her fantasy is not just like we're going to connect over this dessert thing and maybe we'll have a relationship like specifically she's like i want him to dominate <laughs> Right? It does yeah, tell like, you a lot about her character. Me, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> there was an interesting addition. It really was, and and so th- there's that scene, and then there's another scene where something similar ha- happens, mm. and both of them, th- th- like she doesn't even care that her whole fantasy is there in the office with other people <laughs> around, right, 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 right around them. Like it's They're even never more anywhere else than you think. Yeah, right. It's in the office. There's other people there. They're watching or they're minding their own business. <laughs> but she just like she does. She's so like it. It's at, at, at first like when when it happened the first time, I didn't pick up on it except for the fact it's like oh she's probably just like a horny character. I, I don't know. Is that going to be a thing for 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 her? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but then. They make it v- v- very, very clear down the road that uh, she's not only a fan of the blog. She, I, I, th- I think, did they mention that she had her own uh, or no? Sure, she, she, uh, she has. An she account. follows the blog. Yes, right. 
She calls herself Sweets Princess and she comments on the blog and she will like give him clues like, oh, if you really like this dessert, what you ought to do is go here. And then she'll wait and see if like, is there an update from the blog where he did go there? Is he listening to me? And did Kantaro mm-hmm. have a sales visit scheduled that place that day? Because yeah. he always he always updates the blog like immediately after he leaves the restaurant. And I think he he knows Dobashi is kind of on to him about this. And he never thinks, oh, I'll just write about it and then cue that post for next for tomorrow week. or like, next week. Like, yeah, he not only. <laughs> Right immediately after you leave the restaurant? Sure. You don't have to post immediately after you write it. This entire (laughs) show would have all its problems solved if he just cued his posts. Exactly. That's all it it takes. But no, so she they 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 make it clear that she she like has this crush on 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 mm-hmm. him. she really likes him um she there's that one p- point that she says like she wants to go on a sweets vacation with 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 him Ooh, and yeah. just like travel the world with him and eat all these fancy desserts from all these different c- 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 countries so it is this like romantic uh, thing that she wants to like get to know him and like how like how do you sit here and write this stuff like well your, yeah. your mind is is interesting and fascinating and we we get enough of it to know it but i think the downside of this show is that there's only one season and that's yeah. it they didn't make any more and there's no resolution there's no it it just stops and that's it Right, because I was expecting what I was expecting the show to do was for him to be found out and his boss isn't mad or like is only mad for a little bit, but then says, if you've been right, spending your time writing this blog and he takes a a look at it, he's like this. Exactly. This is great content. Let's just make this our hottest new book. What a story behind the creation of this book. We'll certainly be able to sell this to all of our bookstores. No, the, the show just ends with just like oh it's a real busy week at the office can i get away for this one special seasonal dessert ah yes i could and he comes back and dobashi's like so i see you got you went to this district today and then the the blog updated with this dessert like she finally like comes out and says is this you and he's like i don't know what you're talking about please don't chit chat at work please bring the snack that i brought home to the office and then just get back to work and he's like (laughs) you'll never know and it's not even like a wink like i know that you know and i'm telling you that i know that you know but we have to keep up this facade for the office there's not even anything like that it's sort of unclear he has in the final episode where he eats this dessert and like he goes there because she had left a comment on his blog so he is starting to suspect that that might be her and he eats the dessert when he goes into his fantasy. They like she's there like she's there and she, like they don't have this in real life purely in his head. He like has this connective moment with her and they like turn into like their heads are chestnuts and then they dance together, which is how yeah. the show displays love. I, it's I so, so strange. It's so weird. Like he's. Uh, He's so we'll admitted to in, himself that, that like in, in he likes her, but like there he's never going to say it out loud. But it's also not like clear enough that that's the point of the thing. Like he never says that. I know yeah. I like her, but I can never say it out loud. He just doesn't, and so you don't know like what's your angle here. Like how do you really feel about this situation? It it just stops. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a fascinating situation and stuff like that. And then, yeah, it's not just it's it was so it's mainly her that is like tr- trying to expose him. Mm. But they also have an episode where uh, he meets uh, it's I, I, I don't know if it's a spoof or if it is the actual person that. So this whole show is based off of a manga. Um, yeah. And I, I from what I can tell, it's not available here in the United States. Um, ah. It's not available in English. There might be some fan translations out there, but I don't know how you guys feel about all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, there's there's an episode where he meets this manga creator, uh, which is 
at at the very least meant to be like a spoof of the creator that makes this manga <laughs> and I, I, again i don't know if that it was actually him or not or if this is mm. just a spoof but yeah the, he gets this idea to make uh the manga kentaro the sweet toe salary man but it's its own like name yeah um, and then he starts like sending pictures of his manga to to the office and the boss is sitting there like what the hell is this like uh this was addressed to you kentaro like oh, yeah. why do we have this picture of you as uh like half man half horse eating sweets oh, right. and stuff like that and so he's, he's just like oh no they're g- gonna find mm. out that i i like to eat all of these sweets and uh yeah, he just has all of these exp- experiences of 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 like don't don't tell anyone like all of this stuff. Like mm-hmm. he gets caught by one of the uh, salesmen, uh, and he's just sitting there like t- t- taking a thousand yes. pictures of him, like orgasming as he eats this like this parfait. <laughs> and yeah, he's just like don't share those with anyone. Uh, and, but then the so the the God, there's the the uh, like. We could t- talk for like a whole hour and a half on these characters because they're all wonderful. I, yeah. They're all amazing. I I loved <laughs> that salesman who was into the w- workouts and stuff. Yeah. Great character. Great. <laughs> so good. I loved yeah, it. All the side characters were real entertaining. I I have to say, this show had <laughs> a joke that I'm shocked. <laughs> he looks up yeah. and he's like right there. <laughs> it was That's so great. funny. Oh my there's god. There's a joke this, in the episode so with the There's a joke in the episode with the baseball player that like I'm shocked I've never encountered. Like in most episodes, I don't think it's all of them, but in most of them, Kentaro thinks on some philosophical quote from like some th- historical figure and he thinks about how that like applies to his day and his journey yeah, and trying to he's get He's always these completely wrong how it applies, but it's so he's so <laughs> confident. <laughs> he's like Frederick Nietzsche once said something, something, something. That means that if I enjoy sweets, that I can live a full happy life. And then they'll have like a picture of Nietzsche there being like, that's not what I meant. Like, <laughs> the I forget the exact quote for the episode where he has to take this like baseball player, you know, mm-hmm. young rookie around. But it's something about how like you have to go through hard times to then achieve good times. You know, like you have to go through hell to get to the space where you're at heaven. And so that's what Kantaro is like. Okay, I have to p- really put my effort into this work and then I can relax for sweets. And he's trying to tell this kid, mm-hmm. like, uh, you put the work into this job and then you can have time for like playing baseball and getting better at it. Maybe you could yeah. join the professionals or whatever. And he tells this kid, go to hell. Like, not as an insult, just yeah. like as advice. You have to go through a hellish time to like be better. He says, go to hell. And then he turns and he walks away and his narration says, now that I've sent the boy to hell, <laughs> go to this cafe or whatever. I've never seen anybody treat the phrase go to hell as like, now I've done it and he's there. Like, I made it happen by saying that sentence. I mean, that's kind of what it implies. But it, yeah, it's just it's become so common place that it's like just he has the power to do that as soon as he says the words he has condemned the boy but he is in hell there he is it's that but it's also the hero's <laughs> journey right where they have to yeah. go through <laughs> hell to like c- come out on, yes. t- on top and 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 stuff like that so it's just it's <laughs> they, it's great they they there's a bunch of like references and easter eggs mm. and spoofs and knockoffs they they do uh the a a castle in the sky yes, knockoff. I loved that. Um, there was another one that I caught. Uh, oh, it was 24. They, they yes. did p- p- part of an episode like it was 24. Uh, and that one was <laughs> great. A, that, that was wonderful. I'm sure there's some in there that I didn't catch because I just don't know what yeah. they're referencing. Um, but then one of the books that they're publishing is a spoof on Akira. Uh, the yes. ma- ma- manga, which I have a p- 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 poster for right there. And the, yeah, they it's it's some hot new manga that they're p- publishing named, uh, I believe it was Akiko was the yeah, name Akito of it. Yeah, Akito or something like that. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And then they 
go to a a signing where the manga ka will be, be be there and it's a, it's a spoof on on his name too it's uh it was like katsushiro Potu- like Potomo or or, or or something like that. It's just like this is like it's blatantly a, 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 a yeah. Kira. This is so funny. This though. is this is my legally separate Bonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. The last character that we need to t- t- talk about is his mom, Kentaro's mom. Oh my god. This was amazing. She she mm. was wild. So this. Throughout the entire show, there are a there, there's there's so much sexual in you, Endo. This one was maybe the most awkward. Like just her her I... character entirely. It was funny, but the whole thing was just like this is a little weird. <laughs> yeah, the thing with the mom, and then also there's an episode before that where he has to uh like the boss gets called away for some like golf trip with like an important colleague. Like somebody mm-hmm. really wants to impress at the last moment. He's like, I have to go this golf trip. My wife's not available. I apparently have no other family and friends because Kantaro, you have to babysit my like five year old son. And there's some real funny bits in it. Like the fact that Kantaro presents the child with his business card. Right. Yeah. And the fact that you, the kid's sitting there with crayons. But every time you really look at what he's doing, he's just coloring an entire page blue. <laughs> <laughs> or red or green he's not drawing anything he's just coloring it and the show has had this like dude it's orgasmic this sort of metaphorically sexual experience when he eats these desserts yep. that is purely metaphorical there's nothing literally sexual happening in any scenario at any time in this show but when he's so he's babysitting this kid and the kid's being a real brat and he also mentions how, like, his mom doesn't let him have sweets. And Kentaro wants to, like, give this kid something so that the kid will, you know, be nicer to him while he's like stuck him, babysitting yeah. him all day. And also, he doesn't want this kid to, like, have the life he led. Like, he wants to, like, give him sweets because he prizes sweets so much. He thinks that's such a good thing for kids, for anybody to have. And so he goes out and he gets these real fancy, like, they seem like the equivalent of, like, a chocolate bonbon or a truffle or something. And he brings them mm-hmm. home. And he's like eating him in front of the kid and like teasing him with it. It's like, no, do you think you're going to have some? Oh, nope, it's all for me. And then he's like, I have to leave the room and go to the other room and send business adult emails. And he leaves you know, with the box of chocolates in front of the kid. And then he's like peering through the crack in the door as he watches the kid like sneak and eat them. And he sees the kid be really happy. And he's like, yeah. oh, yes, I'm introducing this kid to like sweets. And they're like, really good well-made like culinarily mature sweets it's not just like some store-bought candy and like it's a very it is a sweet episode it's fun but because there's been such a sexual metaphor around the experiences with eating the desserts it's also weird yeah It, it yeah it definitely is but so with his his mom his mom it turns yeah, and out like the same is, thing happens with the mom yeah like i said there's nothing literally sexual ever happening but because they set up this sort of sexual metaphor this with theme, this yeah, culinary this experience it's weird innuendos it's weird when he's like giving sweets to a kid and then trying to like hide from his mom that he's super into sweets the mom episode well, is odd the, the the it's so it ch- 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 turns out his mom is a dead 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 de- dentist yeah and is like super like you shall have no sweets whatsoever no sugar period yeah um and she is like uh, like hyper fixated on that that like when when uh, like to the p- 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 point that Kentaro is scared of 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 her, and that's when the whole twenty four metaphor me- yeah. c- c- comes yeah, in. Yeah, like, sh- like I'll be there in one hour, and it like it, it does the whole like Jack b- 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 <laughs> hour countdown timer, all all, all that yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, so he like the, his his mom gets the, 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 the there, 
and is like inspecting the the, the house and all, all of that stuff. And it's like, okay, couldn't find sweets. Good. My my good boy Kentaro. But you don't see her until she enters the house. You only yeah. see her legs. And so they do this like seductive, like, ooh, look at her shoes. Like those are expensive. High he- heels. She has stockings on. Uh like she yeah. seems she seems like they're they're presenting her in this very sexy way. And yes. Yeah, and then she she gets there and she is very att- attractive and to be honest doesn't look that much older than him uh which I, is I, strange. I wondered I you're right. She is introduced the way that like the show would introduce like an like old a, girlfriend or something. A love a interest. Femme fatale. She, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Femme fatale. She feels sexy and threatening. I'm wondering if this is some yep. joke that we're missing because we've never seen this actress before. Maybe she's and like you, you don't see her face. You only hear her voice and like you see her like the other side of her head or like you see her legs or her hands or something. You don't see her face until Kantaro opens the door to greet her. I'm wondering if she's some like famous babe in like Japanese media. Maybe there's some like ironic joke where like, she, or like yeah, she or used to be like the spokes girl for some sweet brand. And that's the irony. Like, oh, we'll have her play uh, this maybe. dentist. I don't know. Like, I figured there must be some in joke about this actress that I'm not getting. Yeah. Um, but so there, there is that she's presented in introduced in this really sexy way mm. and then uh kentaro's plan is to basically make her fall asleep which i thought was really mm. f- <laughs> funny and that yeah. once she's asleep he can eat the sweets that he has in this like hidden secret compartment with like, uh, with like dry steam and smoke yeah <laughs> dry it's so good um it's but, yeah <sighs> but he yeah so he starts to eat this thing and he's the 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 food that he eats is in eclair uh, yeah. And he has a chocolate one and like a caramel one and he, he eats these things and he's getting like right on top of her uh, to eat this thing. Yeah, and be like, ha, mom, I can eat this and you can't do anything about it because you're sound asleep. And he's he's putting this thing in his mouth, like right in front of her. And he's like inches from from her. her yeah. Face. And so, yeah, it is this thing where like she is like asleep and helpless in air quotes and like they're they're showing like scenes of her neck and the perspiration on her neck and it's like that's also like like, turned really seductive like he turned the heat up in the apartment to like make her sleepy yeah that's what that's from and she does keep like like, softly moaning uh, while while he's doing this it's the whole thing is really strange Uh, but then yeah of of course he's eating these eclairs which are very phallic in the way that they look and so he has that he's he has that and then when he has his like fantasy scene he's then like feeding this thing to his mom in it the whole thing is just like what is going on this is weird (laughs) i don't understand it 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 was funny but it was still just like this is also uncon like it's uncomfortably funny yeah, as much as I like the episode with the mom and the babysitting episode, I'm like, these are metaphorically troublesome, but literally on the surface, everything is innocent. <laughs> yeah. The episode with the mom also had, in the fantasy sequence where he's like feeding her this dessert, they're like flying in a plane. And when in his mind, she eats the dessert, she's so happy. Like, this has yeah. been a weird psychosexual episode. But when she eats the dessert, the like joy she feels and the connection they have, like, oh, I I should have let you have this sugar the whole time. You're right. I respect yeah. how into this you are. I'm happy this makes you happy. It is so pure and innocent and wholesome and joyful. Like you get all of these emotions mixed together. That episode yeah. also is a, the hardest I've laughed all week. Where, like you said, she's like kind of moaning in her sleep a little bit, just like, ah, just like sleep moans. But at one point, she also like mumbles his name, like Kentaro. And then Kentaro looks at her and says, the Kentaro you knew is dead. Yeah. 
It's so, it's, the, the, the show is bananas. It is wild. Um, it's so, so, so good. Um, so yeah, so we, we've mentioned most of the characters and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Let's focus on the food. And yeah. what they do with the, the food here. Because like, like we said, that, that is basically the main, the main thing of this show. They, they, they go to mm-hmm. real lo- 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 locations. Uh, they eat real f- 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 food. And yeah, it is this like, we'll give you the history in the back. Go around and stuff like that. Um, I have to admit, some of the more traditional Japanese stuff. D- did not look appetizing to me that's j- just my p- p- personal thing all of mm. the uh like square i don't like gelatin looking things are just like yeah, i don't understand I didn't, what I those know, are like i don't i didn't know how, there was really this much those. gelatin in in japanese cuisine yeah they eat a lot of like jiggly jello squares or like or things that look like like boba pearls or something yeah yeah there's lots of jello type stuff and lots of red beans and i that at yeah. least i knew about i've had like sweet red bean ice cream before and it is pretty good yeah like i i i am familiar with the the concept that a lot of yeah. sweets are made from like things that you might not expect to mm-hmm. to have them in there and st- and stuff and stuff like that but yeah going into this i thought he was gonna be doing like chocolate cake and cookies yeah. and here's this like sweet pastry and here's this like hard ca- candy that he likes and st- stuff la, 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 like that but yeah he has like a fruit parfait it's like well yeah that's sweet i guess but it's like fruit and yogurt like i i like he has pancakes for one it's like yeah like the maple syrup is sweet but i like i i don't consider pancakes as like sweets um Mm -hmm. i I did appreciate how you can lean into that but yeah go go ahead yeah I just appreciated how broad the definition of sweets was like it. And it introduced yeah. me to a lot of things that like I didn't know from Japanese Japanese cuisine or they know from European cuisine. Like he has like a, a French dessert, an Italian dessert. There is some European stuff mixed in there, too, which I appreciated sure. seeing. And it was a nice departure from what we think of in America is like, oh, you're going to get one of those giant milkshakes with like an entire slice of cake on top. It was yeah. more um subtle like he was taking something very very simple and just appreciating how well it was made and how much you can get from just like i don't know like little pieces of fruit and like jello squares and like and And the syrup different ways to prepare it too because a lot of the stuff was the same ingredients there was a lot of these Mm. red veins and they prepare them in different ways or make them into a paste or yeah a, some k- yeah. kind of gelatin like substance or a syrup or something yeah and it's just like huh this is neat that you can make so much stuff with this um, i like the episode where he goes to get shaved ice and yeah, he, that was a good one like he he goes in wanting like a cantaloupe flavor or something but then he also sees like the lady next Melon, to him yeah. eating a salted caramel one he's like oh i'll just get both i love both and he talks about watching the the, the woman make the, uh, I, the shaved ices for him both immediately in front of him and how she shaves the ice immediately before making each dish. Like she's not pulling out of a pre, you know, they, they don't do it beforehand. They do it live in front of you. He's like, the, depending on the flavor I want that will involve different sorts of toppings, like she shaves the ice completely differently. She sort of shapes it with her hands into a mound in the bowl completely differently because one is to stand up to like a slightly heavier weight for like the Mm -hmm. fruit one where i'm getting little like fruit pieces placed on top versus the one that's gonna have caramel sauce drizzled on it that one doesn't have to be as strong it doesn't have to hold any weight that was amazing attention to detail yeah yeah this show is so affectionate and like sincere and loving and just in absolute awe of the people who make the desserts which wasn't something I was expecting. I thought we were just going to get this guy sneaking away to like eat a pile of donuts 
and then he'd have to like wipe <laughs> jelly off of his face before he goes back into the office. But no, this yeah. is a such a loving portrait of just the ca- cafes and and how they do what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I liked the sh- shaved ice one. That one I think was the one that I was impressed with the presentation yeah. of the dessert. I yes. have never seen shaved ice like that before. Like I've I've seen like snow cones and Italian mm. ice, which is similar, but it's not the same. And yeah, this like was legitimately like ice shavings. I I don't I've like never seen I, I I've I've seen that, but not prepared in the way that they mm. did. They had these big yeah. like cantaloupe size like yeah big, like it was huge. I was like, that's so much. Like what in the world? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and he has to eat. T- <laughs> two of them and he completely forgot God about his second one he was about to leave and they're like here's your second one he's just like oh i forgot i have a second one <laughs> he was so <laughs> happy <laughs> um but yeah so then like when when he eats this the, 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 or as he's like waiting for the food to be prepared that's when he's like watching them and g- g- going into detail about like this is how they make it this is all the love and att- att- attention to detail that they put in these these sweets uh and yeah the the, the there was the i guess episode two i think it w- was maybe it was the first one but there is that one where he was like almost literally or that's most of them yeah, but like I, I felt like it was that first one that was like, oh, like that's what he's doing right now. <laughs> and then it is that yeah. gag of like he doesn't realize that that's what like, he's actually do- 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 doing in real life. And then like, uh, here's your food, weirdo. He <laughs> like- must at least <laughs> partially be aware of it because like sometimes there'll be like a treat being passed around the office. And he always declines it, I think, because he knows he's going to go into that religious experience dream state. He's like, I can't do that around people I see every day. I'll do it around strangers in a restaurant, but I can't do it around my coworkers. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And yeah. And so then he he gets the food. He tastes it. And yeah, he goes into this like brain blast like you said this like religious slash sexual fantasy experience Mm. trip um and it is wild like people's heads turn into different ingredients they love it god in these things they have dance battles they they do they it's so strange it's so wild they have existential crises like in, yeah. in this thing to like explain these deserts like how can i be this flavor and this flavor at the same time like what is going I on really, i like the episode about chocolate like just chocolate bars that no chocolate is one. produced and like he's just and he's taking um this is his his co-worker who's like a really big workout nut who like saw kantaro sneaking off to eat sweets but he also saw him sneaking off to do a workout. And he's like, if you don't tell them about me, I'm going to tell them about you. We're in a stalemate. And like, but that guy never really becomes his like enemy or his rival. Like he feels okay about him. He's like, it doesn't matter to me how well this, you know, I want this guy to do well, but he's like, I don't care if I'm the top salesman or not. As long as I'm just good enough that nobody notices I'm sneaking away to a cafe. That's fine. (laughs) Yeah, it it ends up being a rivalry, but in like a friendly way. Like, like the guy the, the considers guy that, Kantaro his rival, but Kantaro right, like yeah. doesn't care what that guy does. Abs absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah, that but he that, takes him that to the chocolate sh- one was a great one because yeah, he, he, he yeah. just like on the on the surface it looks like they're just getting this chocolate bar, but I loved the idea idea of that like chocolate cafe that they went to yeah that was amazing i would love to go to something like that because mm-hmm. they make they make the chocolate bar for you right there like it's a made to order chocolate bar and 
they have so many d- different styles. Like they they also have like chocolate j- 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 yeah. drinks and chocolate that tastes like fruit and stuff like this. But they use like the same ingredients. It's just like how you prepare it, and they don't put all these extra like chemicals and stuff in or to like bring this stuff out it's just like here's these like four things and we just mix them in different ways and they c- come out radically different um, yeah and like he was, he, he takes this this co-worker there to like just sort of give him some sort of advice like Kantaro. The show is about sweets, but it's not really until the final episode where they address like how sweet is Kantaro as a person? Like, how kind is he? How generous is he? And like, he's a perfectly polite, civil person. He wants other people around him to do well. He never does anything that would stand in anybody's way, but he like doesn't like he really keeps to himself. His eyes are on the prize. The prize is dessert. And he like spends so little emotional energy on anything else. Yeah. But like he sees this guy struggling and he's like, we have this stalemate where, you know, I, I go out for desserts. Let me bring you with me. And just sort of give you this lesson about like treating yourself every once in a while so you don't work yourself too hard. You forgive yourself when you make a mistake and like uh, boiling yourself down to like looking at who you purely are, just like how this chocolate restaurant is all about like how good the cocoa beans are with no add ins. It's not like it's like caramel filled with like a ganache on top. No, it's just chocolate. (laughs) Yeah. And they talk about how like the all the chocolate beans come from these different countries and they, they look at like the actual cocoa bean. It's like, oh, it's the size of a rugby ball. And then the fantasy is like they're on a rugby team with these like rugby players who have like the, the cocoa bean heads. And it's like, all right, you're Haiti, you're Vietnam, you're Ghana, like you're all the countries that the cocoa beans came from. And you're all yeah. sort of playing together and tossing the bean around. That one was a fun metaphor. Mm hmm. That that one was was good. It it indeed they they have some wild stuff that that they do mm-hmm. in in this. I think I the like... most the the one that caught me off guard the most is when uh what was her it was Dobiashi that was what was her Dobashi? name again? Dobashi where she shows up uh and is the like sword wielding sa- like samurai ca- character and does her like she like takes out her sword and it makes this bell ass that knocks him down. But there's three of him and they get back up and they, they're like, oh yeah, time for our special move, the running man. And they just did it in dance for like <laughs> right. a whole minute. And it was just like, what is going on? This is so weird. It's uh, but so yeah, it's, silly. It's so good. It's so funny. There's so many g- g- great jokes or just, um, yeah, um, dumb situations like the one where he goes to get the italian ice like it's hotter out that that day but he also has on this like under armor like uh thing on underneath his business suit to like make him hotter so that when he can go uh get the 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 shaved ice it's this like it's something that will like cool him down and it yeah you know and it but he like it's just he's like full on sp- sprinting in his business <laughs> suit from location to location to get there on time and do all of this stuff. It's it's so funny. It's so mm-hmm. it's so good. I, I like I the episode. This I, <laughs> it is good. I like the episode where um it's like late, like he ends up working a late night and then the boss drags him out to this like dinner. Uh, with mm-hmm. all of these other businessmen who he's trying to impress. And he, Kentaro has his eyes set on this like caramel pudding he's going to go get. And he's not eating anything else. Like he goes out okay. to dinner, he doesn't touch anything. And like they offer him like this sweet and sour pork. And his boss is like, this is the best sweet and sour pork in all of Japan. And Kentaro just looks at it and he's like, there's pineapple in there. What a disgraced pineapple. <laughs> I was really hoping because all we ever see him eat are these high end sweets he goes to get. I was really curious. How does this guy react if you just give him like a Kit Kat? If you just give him Pocky, how does he feel about that? How much can he get out of just like a mass produced, like cheap to your convenience store sweet? And also, does he get anything out of savory foods? 
We have no idea what he eats for like day to day sustenance, what his meals are. We only yeah. see what his dessert is. I was really curious to see like how how do you feel about sweet elements combined into savory dishes like this pineapple and the sweet and sour pork. And instead he's just yeah, like pineapple this, on the pizza. sweet item. Yeah, the sweet item deserves to be somewhere else in like a whole dish of sweets. And I'm like, do you eat anything? Do you eat anything that isn't sweet? Like I wanted to see like, what does this guy do if you do give him a pizza? How does he feel? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? That, that what if you just give him like a kind of sweet barbecue sauce? Like how much can he get out of like a savory item with a sweet element to it? Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be interesting to see. Um, or to, to see him like go on a journey of making his, his own. Yeah. He doesn't cook anything. Yeah. Like to see him bake cake or to see him make cookies from scratch or something yeah. like that would be neat um yeah i uh, that 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 i think would be inter interesting to see i i think besides that stuff other things i wanted to see um was uh, i i i i think more of this kind of relationship the from sweets night yeah. and sweets princess like i i what i what i appreciated about the show is that it ends up becoming very formulaic but very uh -huh. quickly they also like switch up that formula. yeah because we got we got that one with uh dobashi and the b -b 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 boss i forget his mm. name but they go out Miyake? and they are the ones that eat the sweets and have these yeah. like experiences uh with them so it's like it's the same formula but now it's a different character and here's mm. what they think when they eat these things like that that was neat or yeah to for the one with the kid too like that was a de 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 different thing because he ate the, the the sweets and he mm. had this experience um so i liked i liked when they switched it up like that um so finding new ways to kind of switch it up and and do that or um yeah to have sweets princess like give him a certain challenge yeah yeah you know like i want you to uh eat three different kinds of this one thing from different locations in the city and do a comparison on them instead instead of just like here's this one thing and here's all the good mm -hmm. things about this this one thing um yeah, yeah I, well, like I, you could... just like more experience like I, it, it stinks that there is not more of this show yeah, it's so this, good it could go so many places like he he when yeah. he goes to these cafes it seems like he's already familiar with them but it seems like they never recognize him it seems like you would remember this guy coming in and just like having a complete experience over eating like a, a mount blanc or something yeah i, I would have liked Literally. to have seen like are there places he frequents do people like does anybody besides Dobashi suspect that that's him or does he go into a restaurant and he sees like, oh, they printed out my blog post from when I was here last time and it's yeah. up there with like their critical awards. Like, does, what is he? Is he having an impact on the culinary scene in Japan? Sweets making do, you, do people yeah. go to his blog? It seems like it might is, be popular, but we don't really it, get a sense of like, that. It's fairly who's reading well known. It. Yeah, yeah. Like, is he be like, are people trying to talk to him? Is there somebody out there who's trying to interview this blogger who secretly writes about all these amazing or sweets? And he has to like cafes and restaurants that are like, hey, we're new. We've been here for like two years. Yeah. We think we have something that you would like. You should c c come yeah. to our re 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 restaurant. Um, I, I would love stuff like that or just like how he does his research. Because that is the thing. Like, yeah. he goes to these spots and he can explain away, 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 away. Uh, here's the history of the restaurant, of the name behind this dish. Here's, like, how they make it, all of that stuff. Like, I would love to go to a thing where he finds something he's never seen before. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, like I said, it's a restaurant that is new or he doesn't know of. 
and like has no history for this stuff and is is then experiencing it and learning it for that first time uh something like that would be neat instead of going in prepared um yeah and like he goes to cafes for all like little cafes and restaurants for all of these i'd love to see him get like this is a festival treat. I have to go to this festival while it's running for this weekend. Or there's a treat I really want to get at Tokyo Disneyland. <laughs> they have sure, good yeah. stuff there. Like, have them go to a, a, a street cart. Have them go to, like, a department store. I just want to... This show do, could go to a do, million places. I do wish you know I, what I, I really... Up- like what? dream what 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 i wish that they could have done, done is for him to go to the midnight diner oh wouldn't that yeah. have been amazing i that think there's an episode so of good. midnight diner where they do make pancakes interesting yeah but for, yeah. For, to, to, for for him to like this is a renowned restaurant the this chef is well known they're only <laughs> open past midnight and it's like they have one thing on the menu but if he has the stuff and you can ask for this one thing like what is like he 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 goes to like eat all of these different things and he knows all about them what's the one that means the most to to Hit yeah. him, right like what was that first suite that he had like i don't think they mentioned that of like this was the first thing i had that i fell in love with um and then he can be like yeah can you can you make me something 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 and he's like yeah sure and he just makes them and it's just a thing of midnight midnight diner uh yeah wonderful yeah, That'd we've be a great done collaboration. A series of great culinary based uh, Japanese titles. We had the other live yeah. action show, Midnight Diner. There's a lot of that. We watched Sweetness and Lightning, which is a very mm-hmm. cute anime about a, a dad whose wife dies and he has to learn how to cook for his little kindergarten age daughter so that she doesn't grow up with just convenience store food. We read uh, The Drops of God, which is a manga all about wine. And just like yeah. it's a it's a competitive sommelier manga. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and don't forget Chow Down Champs. Yes. Which is about competitive eating. It's not really about what the food is. It's not about like all oh, the flavor profiles. Let's taste how delicious this is and how well it's, it's balanced. How much it's like, c- can you eat? How much this is how you train your stomach your to eat yeah. five pounds of rice at once. Yeah, it's quantity <laughs> over quality with that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I know we save where we, we um, do recommendations <laughs> about this this t- t- time. I would recommend all of those things that we just yes. mentioned if you like this, because um, we've c- covered them here on the show. Uh, so you just have to search like if you want to learn more about Chowdown ch- Champs, you can search for for that one. And we've done that here on the review show or Midnight Diner. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I particularly this one, I think, is recommend the most comedic one, but still, yeah. still good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I particularly recommend The Drops of God because that really enhanced what I know about wine, how I feel about it, how I experience it when I drink it in a way that this is also like, oh, like, yeah, I've seen that stuff before. I've had shaved ice before, but now I'm really going to think about shaved ice in a different way. Yeah. Like, those are real enhancing narratives to get involved in. Abs- absolutely. Abs- absolutely. Yeah. I I don't know if I have many other recommendations outside of that unless you go the sitcom I- route, which I, I, I mean, sure, there could be some recommendations in there, like the office, but it's also just like, but that's also just not what this show is. Like, I. Yeah. Yeah. I- <laughs> I have a recommendation. Go for this it. show reminded me a lot of Hannibal. Okay. <laughs> Hannibal. About Hannibal Lecter. You've heard of him. The it's like the, culinary the cu- scenes when they're like displaying yeah. the food and, and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It's also about a man, like a very stoic man in a very fancy suit who's like super into food. But they're otherwise completely different. 
Other than but that, Kentaro, yeah. Kentaro's so intense. This is a show that you could edit to make it look like it is a serial killer drama. In the episode where <laughs> yeah. his mom comes over, he's like, I don't have time to eat any eclairs. I need a sweet fix. So he pulls out this like lip gloss that's oh basically just like that was sugar one jelly. One of the funniest things of the whole show. <laughs> and he's he smears it all over his mouth and then like just licks his off lips. His chin. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's so funny and so creepy if you put it in any other context. This that God. whole episode, you could where he's like staring down at his mom while he menacingly eats an eclair. Yeah, this guy <laughs> in Hannibal could be great friends. I don't know how you would put human body parts into a dessert, but those two could figure it out together. Damn. And uh from the creator of Hannibal, also by Brian Fuller, there's the TV show Pushing Daisies. Oh, sure. Where yeah. the main character runs a pie restaurant. <laughs> and it's Indeed. not as deep into the culinary world as these things are, but there is a lot of pie in the show. They make a variety of different pies. They're beautiful to look at. I always watch that show and it makes me want to wear cute aprons and bake. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see some kind of American spin on on this, like a Food Network oh, yeah. show. But it's like starring Bobby Flay or uh, who, whoever the new hot chef is now, right? Like starring them, but it is like, a, a, again, like put in this container of a like a sitcom. But the thing is that Kentaro, Kentaro doesn't cook, so you don't have to hire a chef. You just need well, to hire anybody sure. who's good at talking about food, <laughs> whether they can sure, cook themselves sure. or not. It, it, it could be I, Jim Carrey for all for all I care, but like, right, d- like it needs to be. Yeah, it, it, it like I, I would love to see like a Food Network version of mm. this. And and does it have to be sweets? Maybe not. Uh, who knows? But just like. It, this concept is so good. Yeah, it's this so is good. A, I, I, I just this I want show. More. It was a beautiful look at Japanese culture. I, I loved mm-hmm. to go to all these different parts of town, see the cafes, see the bookstores. We go to plenty of yeah. bookstores, even if it's very briefly. It's nice to look at those. Does <laughs> you know, he'll Kentaro walk have park. books on sweets? Are, what, what are the? Yeah. Like, how does he do all this research and stuff? You know, I, he, there's got to be an episode where there is a combination cafe and bookstore. There's so much potential. Like, I loved the show, but you're right. I do want to see this show in so many other regions. I want to see the American one. I want to see the Mm -hmm. French one. Mm -hmm. And Taro (laughs) goes on vacation to do some, like, Corin sale in in, in South America or something. I don't know. Yeah. (gasps) Yeah, one of the homes of chocolate. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. One final recommendation. This is just a baking show that I like. Uh, you know, I, I, I like plenty of them. Your, your Great British Bake Off, all those baking championship shows on Food Network. I always get really into those. There's a show on HBO Max called Baketopia that is really delightful. It's about so many different types of desserts. They do. It's, it's got a real great variety to it. They do like classic things. They do like new trendy things. Yeah. They don't throw those like mid round twists in. So it's less stressful than watching other like more competitive baking shows. And it's got the most gorgeous kitchen set of any of these. It's the most elaborately designed and decorated kitchen set. It's got like a huge stand mixer centerpiece. Everything's beautiful and like color coded and organized decorated cool. and yeah big topi is a real treat i hope they make more of it go oh, good stuff good stuff melissa we should do a check-in on bingo oh that's right see how bingos bingo, are doing bingo, bingo. Uh, could could either of us have remotely prepared for what this show is I, I, yeah <laughs> i don't think so i i had no idea what this show is going to be but it is now a great one great show uh well no one died by electrocution uh a robot was not blamed for murder there was no magic book however i did get one thing the sound of cicadas 
was oh. in episode two. And Melissa, that gives me a bingo. <laughs> OK, I guess I guess are we just we're playing through the end of the year, though. So by the end of the year, maybe all of a bingo, maybe each of us will have an additional bingo. You can keep maybe, getting yeah. bingos. I mean, well, so I, I, I guess we kind of need to figure out what we do next, because do we scrap both of our cards now? And and since since I I just got one, so I, I have uh, an awkward hand touch from a previous thing. I have a mom in an a- 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 apron. Uh, I have the sound of cicadas, a mysterious scar and titties. Uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> how I got bingo there i so i i think we need there's a couple additions maybe we need to do for next time but is that the thing like do do you keep your card and keep playing until you get a bingo and then i just start a new one or i because i we talked about increasing the size i thought we were going to make one card for one year so we'll just keep using this card the whole year because you can get multiple bingos simultaneously So it okay. wasn't about who's the first to reach bingo. It's like by the end of the year, who got bingo? And if you did get a bingo, did you were you able to snag more than one? OK, so I cool. thought we would yeah, make I'm... one sheet for the entire year. I'm not doing I'm... as well. I think I put a lot more silly stuff on here. I <laughs> like uh, somebody throws an object off screen and then you hear a, a cat meow or a glass breaking. But... That's that's the thing. So many of the things we watch will have things you don't expect in in them. And it's like, oh, they, right. they did that one thing. Yes. Ha ha. Bingo. You know, and I and I kind of handicap myself. I put an actor as themselves. We're watching an international I, show. I don't know if anybody was themselves. I, I put that one on my card, too. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe his mom was a, as herself. What? Um, or like any of those restaurant owners could have been the actual person and not like an actor hired to represent that person. But I don't know. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I think what we'll do is what you just said. We'll keep playing with the cards that we ha- have to see how many bingos we can g- mm. get uh, by the end of the year. Um, and. When we do finally do new cards, we will make them seven by seven so they can last a little bit well, longer. At least we're, we're at five, at five by oh, five. That's true. Right. right. We're at five by five now. Yeah, that would have to be the next step up. That sounded yeah, that like such a huge up. number. <laughs> it's just it's just one more row around okay. the outside, outside, outside. But two I think more we should, rows. Because like, we, we've done things where. Uh, a movie or show or comic will have multiple things. Yes. I I think if it has multiple things, we should pick one of them. I don't know how you feel, because I like I I I feel like on a five by five card, I was kind of expecting this to last a little bit longer, which is why I think making it bigger will help. But then there were some that I like. I got three things. Boom, boom, and boom. And it just like it knocks should... out a, a bunch of them. No, oh, no. I would like this is a celebration of these tropes. We should mark okay. off the trope uh, when we That's do fair. first encounter it. Yeah, like it's not about who's the first to get to bingo. It's like how many bingos can you get by the end of the year? And how many bingos is a celebration of, wow, I love to see this hokey thing pop up in this episode. I was so happy that like yep. you met yourself from another time. I was so happy that you and your friend looked at each other and said, but if you're here and I'm here, then who is driving the bus? Exactly. Exactly. All right. Cool. That's that's I, I think the direction will mm. go then. So keep playing on these cards for now. But Melissa, did, did you have one that 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 would no. fit in this? No. I'm that they're that the things I put down were like unless they're super highlighted, I might even forget that they happen. I'm scared I'm going to forget that there's a we're not so different, you and I sort of moment. Uh oh, like there's stuff that I we haven't hit anything with a ghost yet. I put ghost on here. Um I put uh tall guy and small guy are friends. That hasn't Did really we not happened have a, yet. We're not so different, you and I. Moment in this one between Kentaro and Dodobashi. E- 
Yes, but they never like overtly talk to each other about it. It's all like super subtextual. And like, I think he knows what I'm talking about, but he won't admit it. It wasn't what I intended when I wrote that down. So that's why I'm not crossing it off. I'm staying true to like my original uh, concepts for what these things were going to be. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. I, I to be honest, if there was like a se- season two of this, you might have gotten no t- no time to eat b- breakfast. But, uh, <laughs> a fa- a favorite knows? of mine. And I wrote down, yeah. "Why are you telling me this?" But which kind of happens in this show. But I meant it as like somebody just sort of like mm-hmm. a character just drops a lot of their backstory on you at once, and you're like, "Why are you? T- <laughs> why are you telling me this?" Or- yeah, it has their big, like, villain monologue. Yeah, that's just like, what? I meant it to be in Why? situations of exposition, and we don't get that context in this show. Yeah. I agree on that one. Uh, okay, I guess that's bingo then. So I'm that's on bingo. the board with one bingo. One bing. B-I-N-G-O. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, we did our recommendations. That means mm, talk about next week. Yeah, next this week, is normally Melissa. when pitches would go, go in the episode. We're we're shuffling things around. We're playing jazz with it. I was going on vacation in a couple weeks for a while. Woo-hoo. So uh, we do our monthly check ins with a continuing ongoing series. Uh, just last weekend, we recorded our end of the month episode on season two of Dark. And so we didn't want to prolong that over Kyle's vacation. We just moved it up and we're doing it next week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we Kantaro was this one week break in between two seasons of a show named and very much dark. This was a sweet yeah, little treat in the named. middle of uh, time travel traumas. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So next week, season three of Dark is what mm-hmm. we are going to be covering and talking about on the show uh and then melissa will be steering the ship for the next three weeks after after that we'll have some different people on the show uh keep in mind there probably won't be a visual component to Mm -hmm. the show normally we record these and you guys can watch them on youtube and see our faces and our reactions to things uh but yeah there probably won't be a visual component uh to those three uh when i am gone but when i get back we'll be back in full force uh so yeah next week dark season three mm-hmm. get excited for that uh it's gonna be a good one so there you go yeah there you go. that's what we'll be up to this next week uh melissa where can the people find you on the internet you can find me in, on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. I, I'm not super active on either of them, but when I make a dessert, which I do like to do, it'll be on that Instagram. So look for my uh, dessert journey there. Uh, and listen to my Indeed. other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities, where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kids shows you feel like only you remember. We did do an episode on the anime fighting foodons which is about cooking food and then you magically bring it to life and it becomes like a little warrior guy and they battle each other so if you want to learn more about japanese cuisine that way you can there you go uh if you guys want to stay up to date with me i'm at yo kyle springer on twitter you guys want to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at the whatnots and all of our different shows. We are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So go like, share, subscribe. Do all of of that stuff. Uh, Yeah, that about wraps us up, though, for number 164, I believe, Mm -hmm. uh, is what this one is of The Whatnots Review Show. Thank you all for checking this out. We will be back next week. Bye. Bye.